<laughs> Crazy. Okay. Um, so going to deployment cycles. Uh, deployment cycle for ACC or RQS. So they're, they're basically the same. The time differences are a little bit wacky because the ACC side of the house is aligned to the aircraft and their operational tempo, right? We're not, I'm trying to stay away from using acronyms. Where the ST side of the house is a little bit different, we're aligned to the AFSO 4 Gen training cycle, and that's the AFSOC Special Operation Forces Generation Cycle, right? So you can it can be fast, it can be slow, and then depending on if something pops up that pulls you out of that deployment cycle, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Harvey, all, all these things are great examples of you are on a training cycle and it could be, usually it's anywhere between 12 to 20 months. So when we were, when I was at, at Vegas, we took, I had a deployment every year like clockwork. I would have a deployment, I'd get home off my block leave, I would leave about eight months later, I'd pull a four month deployment or so and that would be my year. And I did that for three or four years in a row. There's a little bit more of a deployment training cycle that's a, a little bit more predictable, like the one we're on now. But that actually extends out to, to the back end of that, to more like 20 months. So again, it, it matters on who you're supporting and, and what mission it is. And then that's always subject to change. So it's always subject to something happening where this unit was in their committed phase. And not only did they have people downrange already, but oh, by the way, something happened. A great example is, uh, you know, looking at the rescue squadrons during the fall of Afghanistan that we talked about, the H. Kaya uh, episode that we talked about with Chad McCoy the Vegas team are the people that blew out the door to go do that. So they, they were ready to go and, and, you know, let this, they're on, on call that we need to be ready to go in 72 hours. And they lived up to that and absolutely crushed it. Yeah. That, I mean, dude, to, to say that all they did was crush it is an understatement. Those J's out there. And then the CCTs and SR dudes that were out there running the airfield too. And then of course the mm -hmm. other folks, man, mm -hmm. just doing amazing work. So hats off to yeah. you. Um, well, and, it, and it's funny how those cycles match up because uh, we had teams that were over there too and that were doing a different mission in the same area. So it, it was crazy to watch them not only work in concert, but work at the same time and do a different mission. But that goes to that whole shared understanding of what each other do and, and that mutual respect because it's not just based off of PJ to PJ, CCT to CCT. I mean, it goes across the board from ODAs, SEAL teams, uh, Marine Raiders, to 82nd airborne like it doesn't matter everybody's there to do a, a freaking job and you get it done yep. and you'd be a professional about it yep so